the fabulous Fenton Robinson, and I hear some blues downstairs. I know my audience still loves that song. I still get requests for it. But it just so happens we're lucky enough that there is someone here tonight that was at those sessions and is re partially responsible or a lot responsible for those sessions. So please welcome Hall of Fame member Bruce Iglar to the stage to talk about it. Man, that's a beautiful guitar. Beautiful voice, too. You know, it's a cliche that uh, blues men, blues women, die without getting the acclaim that they deserve, but in Fenton Robinson's case, it was certainly true. I'm guessing only a handful of people in this room ever saw him perform live uh, because he didn't get on the road and didn't get in front of the new blues audience all that much. I want to tell you a little about the man and a little about the record. Fenton wasn't an easy man to know. He was a very private man. He was very quiet, very reserved. He wasn't a party guy, he didn't drink at all, didn't chase women. Um, he mostly came out to play, lived by himself in a little apartment down the road from, uh, down the street from Teresa's Lounge on South Indiana Avenue in Chicago. He read constantly, how many blues men do you hear that about? Read philosophy, read black history, read politics, anything, a voracious thinker. And he even jogged. He was a very quietly confident, very private man. He was also a real artist. Uh, he was very serious about his music. He studied music. He cared about not just being an entertainer, but being a musician who was up to one standard, which was his standard for himself. He's a man who pushed himself constantly to continue to grow as a musician. He was a class act. Before he came to Chicago in 1960, he was already recording down south. He had come out of LaFleur County, Mississippi. He lived in Little Rock, and he recorded for the Duke label in Houston. Uh, recorded a few uh, influential songs, like the very first version ever of As the Years Go Passing By. I think I just lost the mic here. Uh, one, two, thank you. Uh, very first version ever of As the Years Go Passing By. And he was the guitar player on a minor little song by Larry Davis that kind of got influential. Uh, he was lead guitar player on the original Texas Flood, which maybe influenced another guitar player here or there. <laughs> uh, when he came to Chicago in 1960, he has quickly established himself as uh, the house guitar player down at Teresa's Lounge. He started recording for a number of small labels and typical of Fenton. Even though he was already making records, he took guitar lessons. He wasn't satisfied with his own playing, and he went, sought out a player that Charlie remembered named Reggie Boyd, who taught a lot of the guys, a jazz player, and Fenton learned as much guitar as he possibly could. He recorded singles throughout the 60s and early 70s. One of them was a, a song that got known called Somebody Loan Me a Dime that he also wrote for the Palos label, re-recorded it for me later on. And when, when I began working with Fenton in, in the 70s, then he, he kind of broke out of the Chicago and uh, Chitlin circuit. He began playing colleges. One of the things I want to tell you about him as a person before I tell you about this record, he got a following down in Springfield, Illinois. He used to go down there and play at a, a college. And, and uh, in the late 70s, Fenton moved down there and started as a, a residency in the Springfield public schools. He loved to share his music. And he spent two years down there teaching high school kids to play the blues. Didn't get any acclaim for it, but he knew it was the right thing to do. Today, to get ready to, to talk to you, I went back and listened to I Hear Some Blues Downstairs again. Hadn't listened to it for a while. We made it in 1977. And actually uh, was, was uh, pretty pleased with what I heard. And I remembered Fenton Coming to the sessions, he came with four original songs. He recorded two additional songs by his hero, T-Bone Walker, as well as a Howlin' Wolf song. And we did a remake, a new version of As the Years Go Passing By. And Fenton was in charge of that record. I was nominally the co-producer, but Fenton came in knowing exactly what he wanted to hear. He told the band exactly what to play. And they created the good hands for him to launch his music. His singing soared like his guitar playing. 
He could reach up there in his upper register and hit those notes. His pitch was so perfect. And he had such a guitar knowledge. He built his solos out of those chords that he learned from, from studying jazz players. And he'd construct solos that would completely surprise you. You wouldn't know where they were going. And they'd reach these amazing climaxes, not easily just jumping up the neck and going for the high notes as quick as possible, like so many blues guitar players, but constructing an emotional statement that built really subtly from one place to the next and moved you with him. His voice and guitar were like one instrument together, and a beautiful instrument it was. The album, the album ends with a, a remade version of As the Years Go Passing By, and as I listened to it, uh, and, and the subtlety and the, and the beauty with which he was singing, and thought about how few people knew of his legacy, but the ones who have heard him, have heard him live or heard his recordings, realize just how special he was. And the song says at the end, my love will follow you as the years go passing by. So the love he put into his music followed right to here. So uh, you know, I'm very proud to be the messenger who helped bring his music to all of you and to the world. So thank you, Fenton.